Hello, this is Art Small with Edgewater Fullscope, and today I'd like to talk to you about Microsoft Flow and how it can work to help enable you in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for customer engagement. In today's example, we're going to go ahead and set up a flow between Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Microsoft SharePoint. What I will first do is select the connector type, which is Dynamics 365. I will select a trigger, which is when a record is created. I will choose uh, between an action and a condition, and in this case, I'm gonna choose to create an action, which is uh, what will actually happen when the flow uh, picks up new CE record information. It's, then I will go ahead and fill in all of the related fields that should be in the SharePoint list item, including what the list is. And last but not least, I'll go ahead and execute on the flow. Here we can see that we're in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for customer engagement, and I'm in a service case. In this example, what I'd like to do is have the service case, anytime a new one is created, write that information over to SharePoint so that my operational resources who do not have access to Dynamics 365 for customer engagement can see any new cases that are created. That way they can take the appropriate action. I'm planning on connecting this case to this SharePoint list. I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of going ahead and pre-creating the type of list, which is CRM cases, and I went ahead and put in the different uh, columns. And I tried to go ahead and get these column types to match up to the same kind of data types that are in CRM. This is something that is a precondition prior to setting up the flow. So let's go ahead and see about setting up the flow. So here I am in Microsoft Flow. As you can see, I'm on my flows page and I presently do not have any flow set up. So what I would like to do is go ahead and select from the connectors what I will initially connect from, and I'm going to choose Dynamics 365. Now I am given a couple of different common options. Of course, there are plenty more. And in this initial action, I would like to go ahead and create a record. And this is gonna be the triggered, or the trigger will be when a record is created. So I've gone ahead and chosen this, and what I want to do is select the organization, and it's going to go ahead and access based upon who I'm logged in under, and it finds that I've got an organization called Greeley Incorporated. And now I can choose the entity from which I would like to have the information pulled out, and I'm going to choose cases. Then I can go ahead and choose next step, and here I'm presented with two initial options, add an action or add a condition. Reasons why I might want to add a condition would be maybe I only want to have cases that are of a certain case type. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just add a new action straight up. Now what it's going to do is give me the option to choose what I want to connect to. So I could connect to Outlook, I could connect to OneNote or OneDrive for Business, etc. But in my current scenario, I want to connect to SharePoint. And in SharePoint, I'm going to go ahead, create an item. Now it's going to say, what SharePoint site do I want to connect to? So I need to go ahead and put in my SharePoint site. And I'll go ahead and do that here. And I'm just going to go over to my SharePoint site. And you can see I've already highlighted it. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, copy that portion of it. And go ahead and paste it in there. It doesn't like it initially, so if I go ahead and do it again with a final backslash, I can go ahead and use a custom value. Now there may be other ways that you can do this, but this is the way I'm doing it for this purpose. And I want to go ahead and choose the uh, SharePoint list type. Um, and so I can see that I already have my CRM cases list. So now it automatically goes ahead and accesses that list to find out what fields are available. And I can choose the information from CRM to map to it. So this is just, just a straight up mapping exercise. So I'm gonna choose the case title for the customer. I'm initially just gonna use the actual customer um, field here. It's really a GUID in the background, but we're not gonna worry about that for the purposes of this demonstration. I could have a text value pasted in there as well. I'm going to go ahead and choose the description. 
And of course, remember, these are all fields in CRM. I can choose the case value type. And so actually, I'm going to go ahead and enter in a custom value and pull from the case type over here, which is case type label. There we go. I'm going to choose the follow-up date. And uh, the way I'd set up my SharePoint apparently is a little backwards. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I could fix it at a later point. But just to be able to get some data in there, I'm going to go ahead and get the follow-up by and the resolve by and just get some this going. I would like to just do a proof of concept, make sure it's working in the first place. So let me go ahead and save this. And we can see that it is said when a record is created, it's going to go ahead and create an item. I'm going to go ahead and save and test. I'm going to perform the trigger action. And there we go. So it says go ahead and test it out. So let's go ahead and do it. Again, we're going to confirm we don't have any data other than this initial case. And I'm going to go ahead and come over to the cases and go ahead and execute on a new case. So this is, let's see, so widget is broken for widget. And we're going to go ahead and choose the widget company. We're going to do a, a problem. We've got a broken widget. Some of this information I didn't select to map over, and that's fine. Contact. This is all stuff that we might fill out in the normal case. And let's just go ahead and fill in some dates. Again, if you recall, as I was mapping it, I didn't have the exact dates mapping over, but at least it's mapping over some date. I'm going to go ahead and save this case. I'll just make sure. Great. There we go. Case is broken. has been added. You can see that. And if we go back to our list of cases, we've got the widget is broken. So if everything is going smoothly, we can come over to this. Ah, widget is broken. Sounds good. We've mapped over and we've created a new record inside of SharePoint. And I can always come back over to my flows. And if I need to go and modify the flow or edit the flow, I can come over here and edit it. I can decide who's the owner, or I can make other adjustments. I can always check into the analytics to see how many times the flow is fired and see what it's done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this goes ahead and concludes our example of using Microsoft Dynamics 365 for customer engagement in mapping over data from CRM into Microsoft SharePoint using Microsoft Flow. If you have any questions or would like to find out more, please feel free to contact us. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.